bank robber on the run has been caught, but why spend thousands on U.S. Marshals when a GPS implant will do? Right arm behind the veins. Welcome back to Gerard McClendon Live. Victor Woods and Dean Angelo are with me right now. Before we go to phones, gentlemen, it looks like they're blowing me up on Facebook here. Brian says, I agree with you, Gerard. Initially, I thought this wouldn't be necessary until like the year 2030, but on second thought, the time is now for such technology to be implemented. So it looks like people are agreeing with me. I know it's Orwellian. I know it's a little Isaac Asimov involved, iRobot, but I think that we should do this. Dean Angelo, Victor Woods agrees with me. Dean Angelo, come on. Bracelets, GPS, what do you think before I go to phones? It's a nice thought. I don't, I don't know that you're going to find a lot of people in the criminal justice and law enforcement systems that are going to disagree but, with but, you. Okay, that, this is good. Now, now, let me ask you this, Dean, before I go to phones. We already use bracelets for house arrest, right? right. On the right. ankle. Right. Why not use these for transporting? Why not put it on them when they get into the system so you can watch when they're moving, when they're coming out, when they're leaving? You know, that's something that would have to be approved by people that get a lot of paid a lot more than you and I. Yeah, it's like Nicolas Cage in Con Air, you right. know, put magnetic boots on all of the offenders. Let me go to phones. I'm going to Kevin. Kevin, thanks for calling GML. What's your comment, Kevin? Hi, Kevin. What's your comment? Kevin, yeah, hi. I was just let wondering. Me go to Andy. Uh, Andy, thanks for calling GML. Andy, what's your comment? Andy, what's your comment? Uh, thanks for letting me call. Yeah, I agree with your idea about the implants, but I actually I don't understand how the why there'd be an officer sitting right next to him in the car that's armed. I mean, in prison they don't have armed guards right next to inmates. They make sure they're unarmed just so this thing doesn't happen. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Andy, thanks for the call. We appreciate you. Let me go to Mike. Mike, thanks for calling GML. What's your comment, Mike? Hey, Mike, what's your comment? You're on GML. Hey, how you doing, Gerard? All right. I'm a 30-year sheriff's veteran, and I work for the United States Marshal Service at one time. The problem is, is with that state's attorney unit, those guys are really not trained for that. Mm. That just comes with the job. But their job basically is to investigate for the state's attorney. They should not be transporting prisoners. The sheriff's police or the Department of Corrections, that's their job. Yeah. They're better trained at that. Yes, sir. And that happened because, for one thing, you never have your weapon next to a prisoner in the back. Mm. You had your weapon to the driver. Mm. Because if you fall asleep, that guy's going to grab your, grab your weapon and <laughs> he's going to use it against you. Yes, sir. And this is what happened. That's right. Hey, Mike, thanks for the call. We appreciate you. Let me go to Victor. Victor say, hey, if you fall asleep, it's over. <laughs> well, that, that's the truth. And, and Gerard, can you hear me, Gerard? Yes, sir. Yeah, listen, let, let, let me say this, too. When we're talking about putting uh, bracelets on people and, and, and all these type of devices, a lot of times they try things with prisoners and then it, it carries over into the general sector. Mm. So don't be surprised, you know, 30, 40 years from now that all citizens are required to have some kind of form of uh, GPS on them so people mm. can track them wherever they go. Because you have it now with the toll with the tollway. Everybody yeah. now is, is required unless you do, in, in, to have a toll pass <laughs> unless you're willing to pay, you know, an exuberant amount of money. You got to pay almost three times the regular toll for the privilege of riding through the toll on the on the on the on the, on the road without someone knowing who you are. Yeah, that's so true. Now, be now, careful about what you wish on prisoners and inmates because it might come back to this. That's issue. true. Now some toll roads give you the discount, but I'm gonna tell you, man, yeah, not, not that, in Chicago. That that <laughs> That toll road I pass thing, it is very convenient, and you're absolutely right. It's highly trackable, because I've checked it on several occasions, absolutely. and it's very, very accurate. Let me take one more phone call. I'm looking, though, at Madej's record here. Ten years behind bars for an earlier attack in his life. Three counts of bank robbery, Pennsylvania robbery. He stole a car. Madej fled from a juvenile detention facility. He was uh, convicted of robbery, kidnapping, burglary, grand theft, conspiracy to commit a felony. Why was this guy? out of prison in the first place. He should have stayed in there. Let me go to Richard. Thanks for calling GML. Richard, what's your comment? Hey. Hello. I got a comment about the uh, GPS tracker. There was a movie in 1991 called Deadlock. It was a bracelet that hung around your neck. Right. And if you moved away from your partner or from the vehicle, it actually blew up. Oh, <laughs> hey, Richard. Let's not go to that extreme. Hey, Richard, thanks for the call, man. I appreciate you. Woo, it's Con Air and Deadlock in the house. Dean Angelo, final comments. Make it quick, then I'm going to Victor. 
Well, you know, when things like this occur, everything gets re-explored and they're going to go back and examine the process, they're going to go back and examine the procedures. And if those investigators, maybe because of budgetary reasons, were assigned to transport this guy, like the one caller said, weren't supposed to have those responsibilities, I'm sure that's going to come out as well. Yeah, Dean Angelo, thanks for being on GML. Victor Woods, final comment, man, 15 seconds. Hey, listen, my final comment is, is simply that, you know, we need to spend some more time in the Bureau of Prisons around this country uh, preparing people to re-enter society. As long as we just house in, uh, people and we have a system that's going to allow people to leave, as long as we just house them and don't do proper things to prepare them to re-enter, then we're going to have all kinds of crazy people running and escaping from law and, and, and being a public safety hazard. Let's spend and put some money and budget some money in helping these people before we release them back into society, because otherwise we're just releasing time bombs back into society. Author of A Breed Apart, Journey to Redemption, Victor Woods, thanks for being on GML. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Professor at Calumet College, Dean Angelo, thanks a lot, my friend. You're welcome. All right.